Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, March 7th. Uh, we want to remind you, of course, that we are on cable, so when you come up to speak or when they take shots of the audience, smile for the millions that are watching at home. Uh, first item up, number one, the Friends of Arlington, the Council on Aging, Mr. Ken Greenlee. Welcome to all of you. Oh, thank you for having us. Thank you thank for you. inviting us tonight. Thank you. Lois Shan is handing out. Nice to see you, Lois. This is the handout for tonight's program. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for having us. And, and one of the big things I'd like to say is thank you, the selectmen in the town, for believing in the Friends cause. Um, this is our seventh year that we're announcing the Running with Friends 5K. Um, and before we request approval, uh, we handed out a giving history to kind of see, show what our accomplishments have been uh, over the years. Um, we've approx donated approximately 58,000 back to programs uh, for senior programs in the in this, uh, town of Arlington. Uh, things such as walk the rink, social activities and events, uh, COA transportation, um, uh, friends of the Arlington Council on Aging Emergency Assistance Fund, uh, direct aid for seniors, uh, holiday stocking stuffer program, which is popular. We have the kids uh, at the elementary schools uh, design and create stockings, and then the parents help out with stuff those. We had a great little celebration over at Brightview. Uh, Captain James Kern came over that night, and we lay out all the stockings so we can see them. And then we have volunteers which, uh, who deliver the stockings to the seniors in Arlington. We delivered over 70 stockings to uh, Arlington seniors uh, that are designated by the COA. Uh, we have specialized senior programming software that we donated to. Uh, and um, for the most part, since 2009, uh, you remember Arthur Budnick, our founder, he has stepped down, since stepped down as the president and board member. Um, but still hanging around. And we, <laughs> we, we let him, we, we made him come to take pictures tonight because we didn't have a photographer. <laughs> so, and one of our missions tonight is to uh, also announce that we need volunteers and donors uh, for the programs to keep them going. Uh, as you can see on our giving tree that we uh, have grown every year. We started in 2009 when Art first founded the Friends and donated about $1,250. Since then, we've gone from a 5K race to uh, barbecues, helping with uh, yard sales, and also the annual holiday stocking stuffer program for seniors. So we're up uh, approximately 14,000 over the last two years, uh, last year, and then again this year in 2015. Uh, the COA, uh, Susan Karp, Director Susan Karp, uh, hopefully she was going to make it tonight. She may still be on the way. Uh, she provides grant requests to the friends, and we fulfilled this year uh, or approved 14,600 in grant uh, requests for her. And those are listed at the bottom of the tree. Uh, it's a two-tiered tree. So uh, I'll let Jim uh, Muncy, who's on the board of the COA, talk about the COA programs in a minute. Uh, but I can't say enough. Uh, to the town, and I want to thank the town, all the departments, the support groups from uh, the police, I think the police who do a great job for us and helping us with the race, and uh, ambulance services, the DPW, fantastic, uh, giving all the, th the things, supplies we need to mark the course, and uh, the volunteers in Arlington. Uh, we had a tremendous amount of individual um, support from volunteers. We also have the high school kids who do their volunteer community effort and it goes to their graduation. <laughs> we had approximately 70 to 80 uh, the kids from Arlington High track teams, the boys and girls, and also the student council, and then uh, whoever else uh, we can get in touch with. We get in touch with, uh, uh, I wanna say it right, Ms. Mrs. Bodie each year uh, to ask for her and she spreads it through the athletic department and the other uh, school groups to, to volunteer each year. Um, so I can't say enough to thank you for all the folks who have been involved in the race. Uh, and this is my 60 minute, 60 second plug or six second plug. We do need volunteers this year to help with the race. Uh, so anybody that's watching, all the viewers out there, 
uh, we need volunteers, donors. Uh, we have a great volunteer corps, and you're looking at the ones that behind me are the big coordinators of the race. Um, and I want to say thank you to the selectmen, also Arthur Budnick for all that he's done in founding the uh, Friends. And we are welcoming a new board member this year, Joanne Morrell, who is with us and uh, a great addition. Um, we also have something we'd like to put in the memorial case. Um, I'm told there's a case in town hall here. We would like to give one of the emblems that we give the race uh, participants uh, or the winners and some special uh, uh, volunteers. We recognize certain volunteers. This year it was Lori August from the COA and Bill Murphy. So we'd like to donate this to the town to put in the uh, celebration. So the winner of the 5K race would, would get that? Is that the, the winners idea? and also any special volunteers, we give this in appreciation. Well, I'll put it on, and Arthur could take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we could lead people. <laughs> no, 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 no. There you go. <laughs> put it on that gentleman. Uh, right? uh, uh, yeah, he actually runs it. Come on, Adam. Go ahead. Yeah. You put it I, will, on. I will leave it in good hands. I'll take care of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. But there's a display case downstairs, and we'll... We would love to have it on display. Right. So, and we'd like to make that a tradition every year. So we'll try and dig out last year's if we can find one. So... So again, thank you. And now for the, the moment we've been waiting for, uh, we'd like to request from the selectmen to approve the race for the seventh annual Running With Friends 5K. It's gonna be September 11th, it's a Sunday morning, and the same course as the prior years. And we hope to see Mr. Curl and Mr. Byrne there. And maybe the others walk it, because that beautiful Mass Ave project, you have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Move While approval. it was being constructed, we ran through like this. <laughs> <laughs> Move approval. Second. Move approval, second. Further discussion? Yeah. Of the uh, runners, Mr. Byrne? Um, no real discussion. I just, this is always a great Sunday. It generally correlates with the, either the first or second Patriots game of the season. So um, it's a good way to uh, go get a sweat in before going and enjoying the game. Yes. <laughs> and I might add, uh, it to get uh, the... Uh, the Brady family donates either tickets or football each year, so you can get in on the raffle there too if you're Excellent. that close, uh, if you're a big Pats fan. Yeah. So. Mr. Dunn? Delighted to support just noting that the um, part that's on the bike path is under the town manager's jurisdiction as opposed to ours. Oh. Yes. Another runner, Mr. Kiro? Well, I just I wanted to correct. I wanted to correct the record, just just to be fair. I think I ran it once. That was the beginning <laughs> and end of my uh, road racing uh, days. Our we still remember mini that. heartbreak, <laughs> uh, heartbreak hill. There, Mr. Byrne and, and Mr. Chaplain have done it uh, numerous times. But yeah. I know my daughter is a member of the cross country team up at Arlington High School, and the, the kids really do appreciate the opportunity to come out and and <coughs> and, 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 and help there. Yeah. And uh, we appreciate all you do for this. And and this year. Obviously, it's a somber anniversary. September 11th is a somber day, but it's also a day of national service, too. So um, we appreciate the, the, this, this outpouring of service also yeah. to our senior community. It's a fitting day for it, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Do you need anybody to drive the course that morning? <laughs> a pace car. <laughs> we need volunteers for everything. <laughs> I would be glad to volunteer. Are you good with it. pictures, too? <laughs> <laughs> we need video and pho photographers, so. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a good point. Lois Shannon has pointed out that we Lois. do need a singer for the national anthem. <laughs> you don't really want me to do that. Do you? Thank you. I will if Lois will sing it with me. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. Let me get that down. <laughs> so I'll let uh, Jim Muncy, if you want to talk about the COA program. Okay. Um, Susan Clark Carp would have been here, but she's not feeling well, so I said I'd come in and just say a few words. I don't think I have to say much um, other than I'm on the board for the Council on Aging that you appointed me to, and I love it there. <clears throat> we try to get as much done as we can to keep things moving. And just by watching your nodding heads as he was speaking, you get it. So I don't have to say a heck of a lot. <laughs> You've got everything in front of you you need to know, and I know you're going to do the right thing by passing that. And we in the Council really, really appreciate the money that they donate for us for transportation and for the social events and the wellness programs, it's just amazing. And the software program we use to try to keep track of everything we do, without them, we really wouldn't have a chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jim, 
Oh, is that it? That's the that's it. Perfect. All right. All right. All those in favor of the uh, of the motion to uh, hold the 5K on September 11, 2016, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, thank you all for your very excellent work. Thank you. We'll see you there. Thank you. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll be there. Not to sing the national anthem, Lois. <laughs> we want to attract a crowd, not scare it away. <laughs> Yeah. All right, see you later. Take care. Thank you. Uh, so next what we're going to do is the consent agenda, and I will read through these items, and then afterwards, if any of you are here and wish to speak on any of these items, uh, you may do so. So consent agenda. Uh, minutes of the meeting for February 10th. Uh, request for the Patriot State Committee events on 41716. Great to see they're uh, up and running. Event permits requested for 417. Uh, the 52nd Annual Patriots Day Fun Run at 845, the Monotomy Reenactment at 12 noon at the Jason Russell House, and the Patriots Day Parade at 2 p.m. A request for a one-day all-alcohol license March 19th for the Leslie Ellis School Auction for Financial Assistance. A request for a one-day beer and wine license at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private party. A request for a one-day beer and wine license uh, for uh, April 8th for the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the Dallin School Spring Auction. A request for a one-day all-alcohol license May 14th at Fidelity House 25 Medford Street for their annual fundraiser. A request for a contractor drain layers license Burgess and Sons. Request contractor drain layer license MT Mayo Corp. Uh, 27 Bear Hill Road, Stoneham, and appointments of new election workers. Uh, Cheryl Behan, 161 Wachusett Avenue for Precinct 19. Francis Contelli, 67 Stowcroft Road for Precinct 19. And Elizabeth Crosby, 97 e Egerton Road for Precinct 4. Rose Erman, 16 Cheswick Road, Precinct 6. Uh, uh, Carlene Hutchins for, uh, uh, from Melrose Street, Precinct 4. Ashley Marr, 64 Maynard Street, uh, Precinct 21. Mm -hmm. Helen Martell, uh, Osborne Road, Precinct 4. Jocelyn Moore, Fremont Street, Precinct 16. Sarah Pinkham, Medford Street, Precinct 10. Mary Tierney, Winslow Street, Precinct 10. Kim Urquhart, uh, Court Street Place, Precinct 8. Ann Walter, Beverly Road, Precinct 8. Who can repeat everything that I just said there? Move approval. Our, uh, move second. approval and a second. Is there anybody here wishing to speak on any of those events, the one-day licenses? Um, any of our election new appointees here who'd wish to give a speech? Anybody? Bueller? Anybody? Uh, Mr. Dunn? Uh, noting that the minutes have a revised first page that's here on our desk. Okay. Side. Thank you. Or, no? Can you just say what the revision is? Yeah, the, revi is? Uh, I, I the revision that. is under the first item, noting that we voted on the new town manager contract in open session. The first draft didn't reflect the, that vote, and now it does. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, we're all set. Uh, so uh, move approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Byrne. All those in favor of all of those items, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, all those opposed. Public hearings. Blueberry Hill Lane, uh, betterment request, repair to private way. Who's here to speak on behalf of Blueberry Hill Lane? Please. My name's George Koser. live at 6 Blueberry Hill Lane. Um, we and Pamela Drive are adjacent, so we actually have two requests. There will be two separate contracts, um, the same contractor. Gary Shostak is here for, for uh, Pamela as well. For Pamela Drive, okay. Um, we have um, spoken with all the neighbors. I believe Ms. Kropelka told us that all the ballots came back in favor except one person who didn't get back. I think that was the latest that we heard. So I believe that we have the two-thirds approval. Oh, they, all they all came back. back. Even better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a neighborhood email list. We have neighborhood block parties. We've talked about this. Uh, there was no, no issue in doing this. The road is kind of beat up. It's been 30 years, and 
uh, we very much appreciate the uh, betterments process that the town has uh, as a framework for us to first get some assistance from uh, one of the town engineers to give us some preliminary estimates. Um, Gary did all the work to find all the estimates from the contractors, which we have, and we're here to make the request and answer any questions if you have any. Okay. Anything else, sir? Uh, just that uh, the town personnel have been extremely helpful in doing the process and helping us carry it out. Mm -hmm. So we really appreciate the support that both the town engineer's office as well as the selectman's office and assessor's office gave us. Great. Congratulations, Adam. <laughs> Take it. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Murray, just to double check, I want to make sure I, I got it. So every, every person returned and every person said yes? This is very controversial. <laughs> you did a wonderful job, believe me. You should go around to everybody else and tell them. <laughs> uh, move approval. Did you scare them? Second. All right, we, we probably have to do these one at a time, right? Yes, uh, move so, approval for Blueberry. All right, move approval for Blueberry Hill Lane. Is there a second? Second. Second. <coughs> and this is a hearing. Is there anybody here who would wish to speak on this matter? <coughs> and say these two gentlemen are not being honest with us here. Anybody? No? <laughs> You're just dying. <laughs> no, I'm going to get a little conflict going. No, I'm not. How many pills. residents are here from Blueberry Hill Lane? Show of hands, right? OK, good. Good for you. All right, so it was moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. A motion on Pamela Drive, please. So moved. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Any discussion? Anybody here wishing to speak on that? Neighbors from Pamela Drive, raise your hand. Oh. Same bunch. Outvoted. Out, see that? Yeah. <laughs> so neighborhood game there. They need to be careful. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion by Mr. Byrne, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, so both are approved, and the, both of you and your neighbors deserve an awful lot of credit for doing things right. Uh, and it's wonderful to hear that though the excellent team on this town has worked well with you, really as clearly you have worked well with them. So right. good luck to you and your neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. We very Thank much you appreciate much. it. Take care. It's the final word. Thanks. For Neighbors, that. give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> of okay, appointments to the Open Space Committee. And we, since these are new appointments, we normally ask that those who are being appointed do come here the first night of their appointment. So first, Kelsey Cowan and Gwendolyn uh, Richter. I'm Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. You can go first, Gwendolyn. Okay. That's all right. Uh, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for your willingness to serve. Do you want to, why are you interested in serving? Um, well, I was on the Master Plan Advisory Committee, and there were other members of the Open Space Committee, so I got to know some people through that process, and I'm a... A uh, 20-year resident of Arlington, and I walk a dog, and so I feel like I'm in touch with a lot of, uh, not in touch, but I actually am visiting a lot of the open spaces, and I'm very aware that you know we're, we have a limited space in town, so I, I like the idea of being on that. I'm also an architect by training, so um, I feel like I have an awareness of the uh, environmental stuff in town. So. Well, thank you for all you've done so far, and for your willingness to serve. You're welcome. Forever. Thank you. Move motion, approval. move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. And questions from the committee? Jo Joe. I'll just say, I think Wendy's an excellent uh, excellent appoint appointment, having served with her on the Master Plan Advisory Committee. She also was a fellow Stratton parent and helped with some of the um, the phase one of the uh, renovations up there at Stratton that kind of lended her professional eye to that. So appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's no more grilling for Wendell. That's it. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you. Kelsey. I don't think she's here. She is here? I, I don't see her. Oh. No. You know, she watched on TV and saw that grilling and said, I am not mm -hmm. showing her. <laughs> so uh, I would take a motion to approve, but then we would ask Kelsey to please come to us at a, at a future meeting. It's, um, you know, there's over 100 boards and commissions in the town of Arlington. And we do like to uh, thank the volunteers and meet them. And um, uh, so we would like her to come if she could at a future meeting. So a motion. So moved. So moved second. Uh, by Mr. Uh, Kiro, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And then an appointment to the Arlington, uh, Arlington Cultural Council. 
Brigitte Bueller Probst. Probst? Yes, Probst. Close? Yes. Welcome. Very nice to see you. Nice Why see you. would you like to serve on the Arlington Cultural Council? I'm. Because you're cultured. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, new to Arlington and I just moved to East Arlington and I thought I can uh, volunteer a little and get involved. So I originally I'm from Germany and I know how important culture is and cultural activities and yeah there's a lot going on here and I thought maybe help is needed. <laughs> yeah that's it. Oh, oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hello. We can uh, hear you. The uh, cable people, if you can hear us, you may, hear your you. mic is open and we can hear you. Okay. We're getting a commentary Sorry. from under the desk. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talk to Mr. Greeley's feet often. Yes. <laughs> if you didn't hear it, the voice said, God, that Greeley runs a great meeting. Oh. Yes. <laughs> that wasn't it? No. So, Brigitte, uh, are you... Uh, also an artist? Uh, do you, are you um, a, I'm a writer. A writer, yes. I wrote Which a novel, is artistic. Mm -hmm. but yeah. um, I'm not very active in that. Yeah. I have lots of other things to do, and um, writing is, takes, a lot, takes a long time. Of course, mm -hmm. of course. Move approval. Move second. approval, second. Questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brigitte. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much for uh, choosing Arlington to live in and also to serve in this council. Thank you very much. Thank All you. those in favor, <laughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. It's unanimous. Licenses and uh, permits. This is a license cancellation, common victualler, wine and malt for uh, Camellas, Doug Hine. So, um, Members of the board, the, in order to issue a uh, new license on the time frame uh, for that location that we, are, that we would like to, we need to formally uh, cancel the existing license there, even though it's our understanding that they've essentially moved out and you know, taken everything but the sink with them. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, matter. We just essentially need to uh, have the board vote to you know, revoke the license based on uh, the license holder no longer operating in Arlington. So, so moved. Oh. Second. Uh, who was it? Dunn? Yeah, Give Mr. it to Dan. Dunn oh. And uh, <laughs> co seconded <laughs> by Mr. Byrne and Mr. Curo. So, uh, anything else? Anybody here to speak on this matter? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. The next is the request for a common victualler's license Capri Pizza, 1323 Mass Avenue. Good evening to everyone. My name is Demetrius Kafkis. I am counsel for Mr. Miltus Athanasopoulos, the petitioner. Basically, uh, Mr. Athanasopoulos has been in the Massachusetts area for a good 40 years. And uh, a few months ago, he committed to uh, acquiring Capri Pizza. And uh, he went through the process of working in the place, familiarizing himself, and we're moving forward on getting a license now since we've been able to execute a purchase and sale. Okay. Right. Questions, comments, Hi. motions? Yep, Ms. Mahan. I, I just want to make sure um, I'm reading the application uh, correctly. Uh, the way I read it, um, Capri will only be open Monday through Friday, no Saturday, Sunday. Sorry about that. He, he, huh? Weekends. Will you be open? Yeah. Yes, he will be open on the weekends. On Saturday and Sunday? Yes. Um, that, it's been a consistent. Does somebody have that in front of them? Am I reading that? I just want to make the change administratively, if it should be. Under the, um, what page is that? Oh, it's. Um, it says information. It's page 9 of Page 14. 9, hours of operation. It has M through, M dash F, which I take as Monday through Friday. So can we just make that change administratively? I don't mean to be a stickler. I'm just. No, you're not okay, right? That, yes, Saturday and Sunday. That was not me, by the way. That. Okay, so can can I make that, or can yep. you say that what yes. the what the hours of operation will be on Saturday and Sunday? Saturday, what time you? Is open? it the same, 10 a to 11 p? Yes, it would be the same. Same. Okay, so you're amenable to taking care of that with the selectman's office. So we're going to approve Sunday through Saturday, 10 a to 11 p. 
correct? Yes. Okay. Move approval with the amendment or? Mm -hmm. Move the approval subject to all conditions as set forth, although Second. it seems like they've met most of them. Mm -hmm. Second. Second, Mr. Byrne. Discussion? Questions? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, thank good you. job, Council. Thank you. Uh, thank you for choosing Arlington. Good luck with your business. Notice I didn't ask for samples. Did I you did notice, notice that. Well, we got, a, we got because, some last uh, time, so. Yeah. <laughs> because Mr. You did. Oh, First time ever. Yeah. Mr. Greeny called your bluff on the metal, and it now you're like getting a little nervous. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, <I> see <laughs> <laughs> they might drop a pizza on <laughs> you. <laughs> they came to, oh, all right. No, 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 no. I didn't run it. In. <laughs> okay, Article 17. <laughs> the Minuteman Building Project Assessment Task Force Speaking of deserving a medal, Mr. Dan Dunn. Um, I don't deserve the medal, but yes, thank you. you. Do, but there are, we have one to give <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> we have one to pass out. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a traveling medal, but go ahead. So, uh, in the proposal that I drafted for us all two weeks ago, I managed through a spectacular omission to omit the, the town manager as someone who I think should be on this group, <laughs> which is just totally, he was so obvious to me that I forgot to write it down. Um, I want to add uh, current chairman of the board of a uh, school committee, excuse me, Paul Schlickman. Um, I want to add um, someone from the Permanent Town Building Committee. Adam had a name and I forgot it. Alan Reedy. Alan Reedy. Oh, yeah. And I did speak, so I talked to Paul uh, Schlickman. He's interested in, I talked to uh, Superintendent Ed Boquillen. He is supportive. I'm doubting that it's actually going to be him who comes, but I think that, you know, it doesn't need to be him. Uh, two names that we considered were his assistant superintendent, uh, Kevin Mahoney, Mahoney and uh, Ford Spaulding, who's the chair of their building committee, was another name that I suggested who might be, uh, then, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and other than that, that's it. So I would like to recommend that we, or excuse me, I'm going to move, that we, that we create this task force as outlined and give it the charge uh, as drafted. Second. Just, so in my... Oh, Mr. Yeah, no, Chairman, no. am I reading it correctly that it now will be a committee of 11 with one ex officio, Attorney Hine? Uh, I haven't done the count, but that sounds right. Does that sound right? And, and we're going to have Attorney Hine, do we just put him as advisor or, sh or should he be listed as ex officio? It's actually 12. 12. I think, in, sorry. Yeah, I was. Um, I just want to make sure we do, we comport with yep. what we've done in the past. So I'll leave that. I'll leave that to. No, whoever. let's decide it now. I think you're absolutely right. We should. And I didn't try to spell it out. But what do you think, Doug? I leave it to I leave it to the board's discretion. But I'm, I'm happy to advise the. I, I don't think it's necessary okay. for me to advise the task force. Um, I, I think I would be the. Uh, in other words, I think I can advise without being I'm a member. member. Yes. What so I'm saying is, can we call you ex officio, which means you're non-voting and you're there at the will of the. 11 member voting member committee. Let's call it 12 and just leave him out of it entirely, but know that we're going to avail ourselves of his services all okay. uh, the full time. Is that okay, Adam? Th that's okay. completely okay. okay. And if you're okay. looking for an uneven number, mm -hmm. then I would say the, the Minuteman superintendent or his designee shouldn't have a vote either and should be advisory. But that's. Yeah, I don't sure. think it actually, given that this task force doesn't actually have an authority to make a decision, it only makes a recommendation. If it breaks 6-6, six, six, that's going to be fascinating all by itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we have the parameters. I just wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Well, so do you want to remove the, no? No, I think 12 is fine. Okay. And I, I'm, well, I'm going to support this happily. I do have a question, if that's okay, Mr. Fraley. Thank you. Um, <laughs> So have any of the other communities reached out about the formation of this committee or have they? No, uh, so, I should have, so I should have opened by saying it's approved. You yeah. know, we got 16 towns. DESE has not yet given its formal approval. We have every expectation that that's gonna come, but uh, they, there's, they, <clears throat> there's paper and at least one decision that still has to happen. Uh, so I had meant to plan to pass this on to another to other communities and I actually haven't gotten around to it I definitely will do that now that we've approved it and we've and we've finalized it uh, Adam did you want to talk about the meeting that you've scheduled sure okay uh, so in relation to that question the town manager of Needham had reached out uh, to Arlington Belmont and Lexington uh, sort of the four big remaining communities or at least big in terms of how many students they send to the district to come together and have a meeting with 
town manager or administrator and a designee from the Board of Selectmen, of which Mr. Dunn would obviously be that representative, and just talk about what our thoughts are on the building project. So I had let it, the town manager and Needham know about the uh, discussion about forming this task force, and we plan to go to a meeting on March 22nd uh, in the morning to, to talk and see where those communities are at. I, I think there'll be a range of support to non-support between those communities, so we'll, we'll see where they are. Yeah. I guess I, I didn't know if, um, when I did see, you know, the superintendent or a designee, I didn't know if that new designee was gonna be a part of a committee in every single community and if that was going to, uh, I just didn't know the dynamics of it. it. It definitely, I think part of the reason it's not the superintendent for sure is just because he has to balance across so many communities, it doesn't make sense for him to, you know, be at every single one. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. This group's gonna have to probably work pretty quick because, uh, you know, April 27th is gonna come way faster than we want. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, who should chair this committee? And I think it should be you, Mr. Dunn, but did you want the committee to select a chair? Or don't you think, don't you all agree with me we should appoint him as chair? I, I, if he wants to be chair, You're gonna yes. take the battle to town meeting floor, Yeah. correct? You have lived this, um, my only con question is whether, so f for the regional agreement, I was, v I have been very passionate in the, uh, supporting it and I was willing to knock heads and, you know, make things happen for the regional agreement. I don't share the exact same passion about the school mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm, the only question is whether or not someone, but I do support building the school. My only thought would be if it should be chaired by someone who doesn't necessarily have the, that same, in which case it might be Adam, but. How about if uh, we vote that you chair the first meeting and we go yeah, for the there. purposes of Sounds organizing the committee, okay. and then right. the committee can discuss it amongst themselves, and if it ends up being you or someone else. Thank you for getting me through so that, well, yes. It, that sounds oh, good. we could have we'll be a debate. chairman pro temp. Yep. We could have a debate right now, you know. You right. just want to go gabby, gabby, gabby. No, Adam against <laughs> Ann Dunn, you know. We could have All right, so debate. we're going to appoint right. Mr. Dunn chairman pro temp. Okay. Um, <laughs> The purposes of um, yep. that first sounds meeting. good. Must not be any, you know, sporting events on tonight. Mr. <laughs> really wants to <laughs> trying to do a thorough investigation of all <laughs> items before us. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, I'm not talking the rest of the meeting, <laughs> other than to bring, bring <laughs> warrant article hearings. Article 23. Bylaw Amendment, Electronic Distribution of Notices and Materials. Mr. Leone. Good evening, everybody. Hey, John. So the original idea for this came from uh, Ms. Lucarelli, asking if she could send out the warrant and all the supporting materials through electronically, and it kind of appeared to me you couldn't. I'd spoke to Doug Heim about it, and we weren't sure if you could or not. She reached out to Belmont and some of the other clerks. They do have specific bylaws that allow for this. Um, I've gotten some of the bylaws from the other towns. Um, looks like we just might try and steal Belmont's lock, stock, and barrel. Um, <clears throat> it would be an opt-in. So only if the town meeting members wanted to and chose to. Mm -hmm. um, there are some in, our, in the meeting, some of the members want paper. Uh, they don't want to use tablets, they don't want to use computers, and that's fine. But if we could just cut, cut it in half, we'd save a lot on postage and printing. And it would be a lot easier for our janitor to clean up at the end of the night because it's not going to have as much trash hanging around. So that was the original idea for it. Um, we hope to come back with the Warren article for approval and bring it to town meeting for them to approve as well. Okay. Any questions? Mr. Dunn. Uh, so in terms of how, like, by as a matter of practice, you know, and actually probably even by, I don't know whether it's practice or rule, but we say, you know, if you want to put out an amendment, it has to be done uh, the meeting before. That's by Correct. rule. Yep. And but and we also say it has to be on every chair. It has to be available to every member. Would would that be? We, we'd have to figure that one out. Um, that's been by custom. Okay. That it's on every chair. There's no bylaw or anything. We've just always done that because there was no other way to distribute. Yep. But what we would be able to distribute is the warrant, the selectmen's report, the FinCom report, the um, school committee report, all of those reports as well. If it would be hard to not 
put it on every chair because we don't know who has opted mm -hmm. in or out. Maybe we can just say, leave it on a pile at the back table and make people be more um, <clears throat> diligent about going to the back table and picking things up just to eliminate the, the mess on the chairs. Yep. I mean, t at the end of every night, it looks like heck out there. Mr. Kira. So is, is your thought that, uh, that, that you're going to have actually a, a new portal, portal or something for, for this, or that they're just opting out of the, the, they, the paper mailings? Because right now, just about everything that, that comes before us is available electronically. You exactly. Know, on the so town's website or on well, the email list. What, with the way we use the current town meeting distribution is anybody in town can get on that. Right. Um, but we can't su supplant the paper mailing until someone says, I don't want the paper anymore. So if they signed up, opted on, we could just do it as a giant email list yep. and email out everything as PDFs or yep. even Word documents. If they want to cut and paste, we could be nice to them, let them use Word documents and make up a nice booklet with the warrant article and the proposed vote so you could just scroll right through. Um, it, it's all within what we have and it's just giving the members such as you get your votes already yep. up and nicely done. They can be able to do the same thing. So it, it's sort of a, that's I'm the, it. getting it, the fine tuning, we'll figure that out. It's just allowing us to do it. So like electronic voting, we had to get the bylaws first, then we figured out how to do it. So it's kind of the same thing. I'm just kind of pushing town meeting into the 21st century. <laughs> All for it. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Murray. I, uh, I do like this idea. I, I question, does the Selectman's office have any comments on the mailings? I know you mail out the Selectman's report regularly. And no, if it was voted on, then we would just mail it. We'd send it uh, through the computer. Otherwise, now, as you know, we just mail it out to every town meeting mm. member. But it's also on, as Joe said, it's on all the um, websites and everything. Already, yeah. Every so the report that we do is on a website so that they could get it either yeah, way. I have spoke to uh, Marianne about it, and she's, she was all for it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm happy to hear that then. Yeah, and we do have comments from the Selectman's Office, and you outline, outline things, including each... Um, um, town meeting packets each time is about $920. That's just for printing out the paper, not the postage and all that. So mm. we yeah, do the printing have and the postage, it adds up. Yeah, it does. So, right. so I, I guess I, I do really like this idea as well. I'm a bit interested to see how amendments are kind of integrated in. Um, that was my other question as well, but I'm that's going to be a, a we'll learning process. We'll go. figure it out as we go. So I'm glad that I'm not the moderator for that learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> Right, great idea. Thank you know, you. eventually, be nice uh, if citizens could sign up for this as well, because yep. we do mail the warrant to every house in the yep. town of Arlington as well. But hmm. well just for the warrant. Yeah, I, th I don't know if that, if we could do that, we'd have to change state law. Yeah. Oh. So, so, Mr. Chairman, there are some general laws about not only the distribution of the warrant, but town meeting materials. I think the key to the opt-in is that it's providing, you know, basically affirmative saying, I don't need it anymore. It'd be a little bit trickier to make sure that that's executed in such a fashion that we can really be certain that all residents of the town would be satisfied with it. Yeah. Well, That'd be a little tricky. Idea. Motion? Um, are you asking for approval tonight and then you're gonna come back with particulars at a later selectman's meeting? Or oh no, I'm just kind of presenting the idea. We don't have a warrant or any okay, a, a we'll vote in order. Okay, Second. we recommend favorable action. But as always, what will happen is, working with Doug, he'll come to us with the final wording. Correct, yeah. We'll come up with something, I'll work with Doug, we'll come up with a final version and bring it to you guys for your approval. Okay, uh, moved and seconded. Anybody here wishing to speak on this item? All those in favor of favorable action, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, now, next is Article 29. Uh, I didn't read Article 23, but John did a good job of uh, Explain it for us, Article 29. To see if the town will vote to abandon the easement building lines as may exist upon the real property located at the corner of 54 Pleasant View and Spring Street as taken and established on April 6th, 1942 and recorded at Middlesex South Registry of Deeds, Book 6591, page one, and as shown as lots 83 and 84 on a plan filed with the taking being plan number 213 of 1942. Determine the contingencies that will be attached to said release or take any reaction related, you're the attorney on this, or I'm assuming, or take any action related thereto. Mr. Leone. 
Um, you recall uh, two years ago, 2014, the Kokoruses came in. This is one whole block the town took the sideline agreement, agree easements on. The Kokoruses property, which we released back in 2014, was about 69% of the property. This is about 30 and a half, so it's 100% of the property. So these folks want their little bit left. Um, I've provided material to um, Adam Chapter Lane, and we're just seeking to have the sideline released in the same fashion as we did before for a certain enumeration, which we'll leave to the manager to figure out. Yeah, Mr. Chapter Lane. So what, what I would ask the board for, if it was so inclined tonight, is support of the approach I plan on taking, which would match up identically to what we did in terms of the uh, 55 Venner Road issue two years ago. Uh, look at uh, the difference in the amount of taxes that were paid on the property based on the fact that it was unbuildable with those exterior lines running through the property, as well as the fact that there was an amount of money paid by the town back in 1942 for the actual easement. Um, some of the information in regards to this remaining 3,000 square feet has been a little harder to come by uh, than the original uh, piece, yeah. though Attorney Leone has found some of that information and has provided it to me. Um, so taking that same approach and also looking at it proportionately as compared to what we uh, asked for from the Kakaruses for 55 Venner Road, what I'd like the board's endorsement for is to take that same approach, negotiate an amount, and bring back before the board, most likely at its April 4th meeting, an actual agreement with a dollar amount uh, for a favorable recommendation to town meeting. Mr. Dunn? Oh, sorry, Mr. Dunn. Um, so when we did this the last time, we had a pretty decent understanding of what changing the lines would permit mm -hmm. on that particular space. What, what would be the practical effect of this one? It is a buildable lot already. It will um, just clear the whole lot out. It will maybe affect where the building envelope can go. So it, the, it runs across, if you think of it as a um, triangular lot, it kind of runs across this upper corner like this down to a very tri small triangular piece so it'll allow the building to be placed in more spots on the lot and there's a building there today no there's not one there so it's an entirely unbuilt lot that would that is buildable today and will be buildable to a Correct, larger yeah. or different extent in the it'll future. just re remove that title impetus frankly the title companies don't want to write title insurance on it because they don't know if the town is ever going to actually build a road there and how that would affect setbacks, et cetera. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Ms. Mahan? Oh, uh, yeah, Joe, did you want to say something? Nope, sorry. that's fine. Oh, Ms. Okay, Mahan. Sorry, but, um, no, it was uh, the other issue. I th think what I'm hearing, which is what I'd be more comfortable with, that um, tonight what we're going to do is um, authorize the town manager to um, get more specifics, not just. Uh, the remuneration, but in terms of maybe we can have a, um, sort of amplify on Mr. Dunn's question, have some sort of plot map or whatever, um, as well as what if we do grant this easement and town meeting agrees, um, what is the anticipated future use for that? And I guess I don't know if the town manager can answer this question um, or if it's an appropriate question to ask or Mr. Leone, Attorney Leone. Um, is this a domino result from Venner Road? Is this, I'm just wondering, are we, are we starting to do something where, um, do, do you know what I'm talking about? So it is a domino result of Venner Road, okay. but it's not a domino result in terms of thinking that something similar all over town will happen. This is actually the connected piece of the same easement on Venner Road. Okay. So the Venner Road parcel's here, this piece is right here. So it's just the, it's the continuation of what would have been a street that would run through that property. Because uh, my concern, and it may, may not be a concern, um, is this going to be sort of the new wave of the future? Um, like, before I give up an easement, um, the v individuals from Venner Road certainly made a very um, compassionate, well, um, and to me it was their last resort. Um, but I think what I'm hearing is this is sort of a domino effect from Venner Road, and we probably won't see one of these for a while, not holding you to that. Yeah, I mean, so I'm not familiar with many or even any of this exterior lines taking mm -hmm. like this. This is a bit of an interesting and odd. I'm not either, but now I'm thinking I should. should. Um, so th this is not your, your say, <laughs> normal paper street uh, or, or prior board of survey layout. This was this, would you agree, so okay. Anaheim, that this is a kind of an interesting legal tool? It's a vested property interest in the town. 
And I think that's the key aspect of it. And it's a property interest that we haven't done anything with or exercised since the 40s. Yeah. So I think there are, there are, that's sort of the key aspect of it in terms of you know, how does this apply in other places. It's a fairly strong property interest. It's not quite the same as an easement, which doesn't necessarily restrict development. It depends on what the easement is. Mm -hmm. uh, but an easement might you know, have greater or lesser consequences for the development of a property parcel, depending on what that easement is for. Um, if an easement's just a sidewalk easement, it doesn't really you know, impact things in the same way this exterior line which says the town has the right to build a road. The domino effect in my mind is that the town now has the right to build a portion of a road. Uh, we mm -hmm. can't even finish the whole thing because we've already released the exterior lines to the other sort of half of it. But it's my understanding from the review of it that there's, it's not that there's no conceivable other pieces of the exterior lines left, it's that there's nothing that would impact property one way or the other left. Hmm. If I could just, one more question. I don't know if it's doable, if it's too cumbersome or exhaustive, and if it is. But I'm just wondering, um, and if Attorney Leone knows, um, is there any way if we can find out if similar situations exist elsewhere? I don't know if Adam K, if that's something he can run through GIS, or if this is just unique to this property here. May I? Yeah. Um, so I, I think it would be quite difficult to okay. do that, because okay. I think, remember, the, the genesis of this was what the property owners of the Venner Road reported to us after a, a, a very thorough title search in an attempt to sell their, pro sell their property. Mm -hmm. uh, the town's records aren't typically uh, as readily searchable. So uh, someone, I mean, somebody spent a lot of time in the registry of deeds trying to figure out exactly what the case was with this uh, uh, exterior line, which, shouldn't, which isn't something like a parcel that we have GIS maps for. Okay, and yeah. I guess, the motion is to authorize the town manager to move forward, provide some more information to us. I just want to say, you know, and who knows, there could be a third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. For me, the um, residents of Venner Road exhausted all of, uh, other opportunities and, and really presented an impassioned case. I just don't want to, myself personally, that if we're opening something that we're going to see more and more of these so people can get buildable lots that weren't buildable or get buildable lots that are buildable, but now they can do more. So that, that's where my concern lies, and maybe it's not a concern. So, But I'll wait to see what the town manager comes up with and make that motion. Second? Second. Further discussion? Anybody here wishing to speak on this matter? All those in favor of the motion by Mrs. Mahan, please indicate by, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. All those Thank opposed, you. thank you, John. Thanks. Thank you, John. Uh, Article 60, uh, a resolution uh, for town meeting, a return of Precinct 17 to, to the Highland Fire Station to see if the town will vote to request that the Board of Selectmen return the Precinct 17 polling place to the Highland Fire Station located at 1007 Massachusetts Avenue from its present location at the Stratton School without delay or take any action related thereto. Mr. Leonard. Good evening. For those who may not know me, my name is John Leonard, Precinct 17, town meeting member. Uh, beginning this now, this evening, I feel it is necessary to make a short statement. That statement is that since we began this campaign a little less than a year ago, it has never been our intent then nor now to cast any discredit or embarrassment on the Arlington Fire Department. Chief Jefferson and the men and women of the Arlington Fire Department day in and day out constantly do an outstanding job. They should be complimented for the work that they do and we feel that we are blessed to have them in the work that they perform in the town of Arlington by keeping its residents safe. Having said that, what it is an attempt to do is to correct the hardship and the injustice that was placed upon Precinct 17, and I might add, Precinct 14 in 2004. A little history, 1929, Highland Station was built. 1931, Precinct 11 was put into Highland Station and voting began. 1970, 1931, excuse me, 1971, it was changed to Precinct 17. 
and voting began for Precinct 17 in the station for 40 years. In 2004, Precinct in that Highland station was stopped. Combined to when it was Precinct 11 and 17, voting in the Highland station was for 73 years. Precinct 17 was then moved to the Stratton School. Precinct 14 was moved to the Bracket. As of this particular time, we are still awaiting the official notice that was sent out to all registered voters in both precincts announcing the move that they were going to be moved. As we all know, when the six elementary schools were closed through the construction in the town of Arlington, which had polling at their locations, those schools were done over, polling was moved out, and they were moved back within a year, with the exception of the Thompson School, which took two years before returning to a polling status. I think at this time it should be noted that when the Pierce School, which occupied precincts 19 and 21, was under construction in 2002 and 2003, its polling location was moved to the skating rink on Summer Street. I think it is important to mention this at this particular time because the skating rink is in Precinct 17. Now, in all this time, that 73 years of voting was going on at the Highland Station, with all kinds of vehicles, even some animals, came and went through the doors of the Highland Station bringing with them all kinds of odors and smells which our fire personnel had to deal with. But year after year, voting continued until 2005 when we were moved out. Now some people might ask, we moved out and the Highland Station was not completed until 2011. Why was it not possible to maybe stay put in 2005 for at least a few more years. Since we began this campaign, we have met a lot of people in the town of Arlington and the streets of Arlington. Some of the comments I share with you, which is heard at Park Avenue and Mass Avenue, Mr. Leonard, I haven't voted in 10 years ever since they voted, ever since they moved us up on that hill. Also heard at Park Ave, Mass Ave, don't you think it's about time they should move you back? At Forest in Summer, will it be on the ballot? Where do I sign? Let me know if I could help. Summer and Mystic seems like when the so-called leaders of the town want something done, it gets done, like it or not. But when the average resident wants something done, forget about it. At Grove and Mass Avenue. Don't forget about us. We're Precinct 14. You guys hate going up that hill to Stratton. We hate going up the hill to Brackett. And at Jason and Mass Avenue, I hate it. I have to call somebody to get a ride. And half the time, there's no place to park when we get up there. Now, some people have mentioned on the corners in the town of Arlington, the absentee ballot. But the absentee ballot is not as easy to obtain. <coughs> Some of the requirements of the absentee ballot are you have to be you, in prison, in the military, you have to be out of town, or you have to be physically disabled. Find it interesting, and I hope I can say this right, but. If you're physically disabled, then you're allowed to get an absentee ballot. But what if it's disabling for you that if you want to go vote in a certain location, you can't get there because of where this polling place is located? It's interesting to think also that what we are asking for is possibly four times a year sometimes even less. We're not looking to set up a clubhouse. We are not looking to hold meetings there. 
We are asking for four times a year if possible. Some of the problems that are for, have been mentioned for no access, handicap access, is that it is no longer handicap accessible. I have been asked many times on the streets of Arlington, geez, Mr. Leonard, I thought everything had to be handicap accessible nowadays. So Mr. Leonard, how come if it's not handicap accessible, was it handicap accessible before it was done over? And if not, why did they change it? I mentioned to them that I'd have to try and find out. Other comments is that there's spills, odor, the equipment has to stay warm. And also there is steps involved. What I find interesting is that in the early days of 2004, I believe, when it was, when polling locations were done in the town of Arlington for violations, at least four, maybe six locations have comments that the reason there was violations was because ramps were involved. This was noted, I believe, in a note that I received from the Arlington Disability Commission that they could not endorse voting at the Highland Station due to the fact that steps would be involved. But it piqued my interest because basically, according to what I have found out, by way of the Disability Commission's when Mitt Romney was in office, of all the precincts in Massachusetts, ramps were used to combat the situation where st stairs were involved. So one would wonder if the ramps, which according to the information I have received, are provided by the city or town to eliminate a problem, why could that not be a block to eliminate the problem at the Highland Station now? Another situation that arises is that <clears throat> the first Mr. Bush signed into law in 1990, the Disabilities Act. But yet, with all the information included in the Disabilities Act, we continued to vote there from 1990 to 2004. Again, my question arises, were we violating the Disability Act that Mr. Bush signed into law? Or we basically just went about our business? I can remember many times going to, when I first arrived in this town in 1977, going to voting at the Highland Station. And though I can't be exact on every single voting time, it occurred to me that I walked through the overhead door area, went in, did my business, came back out, and spent time with my children at the time looking at the fire truck that was sitting on the ramp at that particular time. To me, the impression that I got was the station for the day of voting was, for lack of a better word, deactivated, and the other two stations picked up the slack. Now, I did not stay there for the whole 12 hours, while voting was going on. But I don't recall seeing maybe more than one fireman in one truck at the time that I was there to take care of my voting, which led me to believe that for voting day, the business was scattered between the other two existing stations. There's been talk, as I said earlier, about keeping the engines warm. There's also been talk about oil and grease spills. One might wonder, with oil and grease spills, could they be covered up temporarily with rubber mats if they can't be removed completely from the firehouse floors? Another thing that is people have mentioned to me as they travel the streets of Arlington is for over a year, the fire personnel were 
let's say, disrupted by having to go down and spend their time at the DPW yard while the station was being done over. Well, Mr. Leonard, if they're down there for over a year while the station is being done over, why is it not possible that they might not be able to go down there four days a year if we need them just so we can continue to vote at the Highland Station? Is it that much to ask? They were down there for over a year. Can they possibly give us back four days? And again, some of these sentiments have been echoed by Precinct 14. All right, Mr. Leonard, I'm going to ask you please to... I'm summarizing it up, summarizing it up right now. Mr. Leonard, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you please mm -hmm. to stop giving us quotes without identifying who says those quotes. Okay. A person on Mass Avenue, so... Okay. But please sum up. In summing up, to make you aware of things that I have found in our investigation, which is ongoing. I'm not sure if you're aware of it or not, but in the House right now, Massachusetts House, there's a House Bill 545, which you may have already heard about. It was proposed last January by a citizens group that in an election year, in a presidential election, all schools should be closed for the day during presidential election years due to the fact they're worried about what is going on in the schools across the country now. Uh, I also believe too that if we have a situation now where for whatever reason Highland Station has been deemed handicap accessible Unaccessible, excuse me. That maybe what we're doing is we're opening up a, for lack of a better word, Pandora's box. Because I was thinking about it the other day that if individuals came to our town and they notif noticed that the Highland Station, among other locations, is on the National Historic Register as historical sites, would they be not allowed if one of them was handicapped or disabled to enter the station because it was non handicap accessible? In the town of Arlington right now, there are 64 sites on the National Historical, uh, historical Places in the town of Arlington. I'm sure that some of you are aware of this, but I'll mention it anyway. Any work that is done on those sites, if they meet the criteria set by the Secretary of the Interior's Department of preserving the historic site in any way, they are summarized, they are possibly eligible for tax credits. Again, there are 64 sites in the town of Arlington and this Highland Fire Station is one of them. I'm sure that town manager and other people have probably investigated this, and I would hope that they've gotten Arlington's share of grants and credits if any of these 64 locations have been taken care of. I could continue on with other things because there is new information coming in every single day. But one thing, the last thing I'll mention is one thing that <coughs> piqued my interest was, and it, it may not be in the scope of what we're talking about, but there was an article in the newspaper just last week which mentioned that with the ongoing school situation, the Arlington Center for the Arts, the Gibbs School, et cetera, et cetera, the town manager was quoted as saying he would be willing to help the Arlington Center for the Arts, a great organization in the town of Arlington, by the way, with their relocation for a possible another location. At this time, I would ask the town manager to consider the fact that we are also interested in some help with the Highland Station that if you could find the time 
to possibly help out the Arlington Center for the Arts for relocating, and maybe you could find the time to help out Precinct 17 and 14 with the situation that we've put up with for the past 10 years. Thank you. My name is Ann Fitzgerald. I am a town meeting member from Precinct 17. Also, um, I give rides to the polls for the League of Women Voters. And uh, from my own perspective, I had noticed that public transportation only, which is the number 67 Turkey Hill bus, runs approximately a half a mile away from the Stratton School and Precinct 17, which is one thing. And the handicapped accessible, lack of handicapped accessibility is a problem because often I take elderly people up there. I'm one of the few <laughs> women who will drive up there because I know how to get up there and back without getting lost. But um, in view of the fact that they're going to be renovating the school, it makes the um, issue a little bit more uh, prescient. And um, even if I've heard, we heard uh, Chief Jefferson express the same um, problems that existed at the Highland Station to the League of Women Voters. And um, if there's another place that would be closer to the avenue that's, that's transportation friendly, I think um, we'd, we'd get an even better turnout. We have one of the lowest voter turnouts of the precincts. And um, I think a lot of people just don't want to bother to go up the hill and be bothered, or they can't get a ride. So um, if you do take that into consideration, we would be happy if you would do that and consider that um, it's not a voter-friendly place, actually. They're very, very nice in the school, but um, I took an elderly man, and he got, he got out of breath because, and it wasn't that far. From the, from the car to the um, polling spot. But it's, it really is something to keep in mind. So thank you. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from the board? Mr. Kiro. Thank you. Um, I think the first question I had is to, uh, to the town council. If uh, Mr. Heim, I, I was reading the materials that we were given. It, it's my understanding that Town meeting actually cannot cannot order us to, to change a polling location. Is that correct? That's correct. Which is why, uh, Mr. Kier, that's why Mr. Uh, Leonard's uh, warrant article is a resolution. Yep. So what town meeting can do to, is resolve and show its support for Mr. Leonard's uh, position. And I understand it's not just Mr. Leonard's, but for his article to give the sense of town meeting that they'd like to have the Highland um, Fire Station be a polling location again. But again, it cannot force the Board of Selectmen to change um, the, the, the polling location. Yeah. That's correct. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a couple of points. I mean, first of all, I mean, I appreciate Mr. Leonard's passion on this. I mean, obviously, we've all seen him out with his, his sign many times. But, um, and I appreciate you know, Ms. Fitzgerald also giving her uh, perspective on this. But w when I look at it, you know, I live in 15, so we also vote at this, this um, the same polling location. And actually, I'm on the extreme end of the, the, the precinct, as many people are in, in 15 and 13. So we have the same situation with the, with the hills getting up to Stratton and, um, and finding it. And you, know, you actually find that the 13 and 15 are two of the highest turnout precincts in the town right now. So it's never really been an impediment uh, there. Uh, and actually, when you look on the map, I mean, clearly there are parts of 13 that are much further away than parts of of uh, 17 even are to, to, to the Stratton. So um, I'm wondering if there's something else that's going on uh, there if uh, maybe it's a matter of um, maybe some of the, the turnout is depressed because we have in some cases maybe shorter term residents maybe are renting for just a couple of years and haven't registered or, or taken up. Because I'm, I'm struck, we were given some material in the packet and it, it was um, showing voter turnout 
uh, going back to, I think, 2000 or before, so before the change happened and after the change happened, and there isn't any real noticeable change in the, um, in the turnout for, for uh, 17 during that time, so um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, not certain that, that, that it really had the impact that it did. I can understand why people would, 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 would if they've been voting for 40, 50 years at the same place, would, would be you know, upset about having that location change, but I'm not 100% convinced that it's actually had the impact on turnout that, that, that uh, we have, that there might be something else going on uh, there. Um, I'd like to hear what my other colleagues have to say. Mr. Uh, I'm going to move no action on this amendment um, for several reasons. Um, one, I, I agree with Joe's comments on the, the voter turnout um, since 2000. Um, but more, you know, just as importantly, if not more importantly, we did have letters from both the Committee on uh, Disability and the Fire Department asking that this not move forward. But um, at the same point, I think uh, something Mr. Leonard said um, really kind of, you know, scared me a little bit, and that's back when it used to be there, it seemed like the fire station was deactivated. Um, you know, having a fire station deactivated for a day, who knows what could happen on that any, you know, given day. And that just doesn't seem prudent to me. So um, I am going to not support this. We, we, luckily, we have Chief Jefferson with us, but I want either my, the other two colleagues want to say anything at this point. Um, I live in Precinct 14. I'm two streets up from Mass, Am Mass Avenue on Howard Street. I know when it was down at Highland, um, parking was a nightmare, but I also do understand in terms of people that lived in close proximity, which is mostly um, Precinct 17 and a little bit of 14 on Mass Ave. Um, I will say just a couple of comments, and I'm going way back um, when there was the talk of closing um, Bracket and Pierce, and we were looking at all the different districts in terms of getting town meeting members to run, as well as identifying people to come out if there's going to be a subsequent vote on whether Bracket or Pierce should close. Thankfully, it didn't. And when we studied this back in um, the early 90s, we found that um, Precinct 17, because there is such a large um, amount of apartment buildings and apartment units, um, that voter turnout, it was really hard, A, to get town meeting members in there. I know, I think people can understand what I'm saying, because sometimes, you know, different factions get up. I know 17 has always been difficult, but, but I am cognizant of, um, you know, when I was a little kid, if you wanted to get me lost in Arlington, coming from East Arlington, I remember someone dropped me off somewhere up by Stratton School and I just kept walking down. So I understand in terms of, you know, people saying uh, how difficult it is to get there. Um, one of the points that Mr. Uh, Leonard raised, which I know there has already been some talk, um, if for some re reason the Stratton renovation um, does disrupt in terms of um, voting, um, I think similar to the suggestions from the microphone and what we've done in the past, um, it, you know, we'll look at other sites. I know we've done the rink, but I also know that, you know, making that um, in terms of happening four times, sometimes if there's a special election or more a year, not only is disruptive um, in terms of the programs and the use that's down there, um, I don't know the cost factors. I, I do know that the, um, we've all had conversations with the selectman's office, and I don't want to put Mrs. Kropelka on the spot, but um, I just want to let everybody know um, that we've certainly looked at every possibility um, in terms of if we could relocate it to a permanent site somewhere else. And I haven't been able to come up with anything myself. I, you know, I know we've all made suggestions, and um, unfortunately, a, a big thing is someone had suggested to me the Sons of Italy, which I found out is just not doable. Um, but, but we are trying to see if there's some way to resolve that. I do feel it's, I'm very confident that if Stratton School um, is an issue, we can find a, a temporary. Mrs. Kropelka, can you? In Stratton, they're going to vote um, in no, um, Stratton. They'll vote in March, and then they'll vote in um, April, and they've already had, but come September, in November, 17 is going to go to the Pierce School, and 15, 13 and 50 are going to go to the rink um, for those two days, um, and they can't hold it. They can't hold anything else because it has to be just inside that door. But a peer school has enough to put three in, and if people like going to peer school, we could 
really change them from Stratton to Pierce, um, mm -hmm. and it, it's a distance, but the only thing, when he commented about Precinct 14, I have to say, in the 10 years, it's 11 years now, only one person ever complained that we had in writing from Precinct 14, and no one else has ever complained. And Marie, what was the count at 17, the recent it, election? It was the highest. This the highest. Just last week, it was 707. And in 2000, it was 434. And in 2004, it was 445. And then they moved in 205. And in 208, it was 470. And in 212, 156. And this time, it was 707. Were you done? I'm sorry. I, um, I just wanted to ask you um, Yes. Um, just the, the last point. Um, of course, the board and, and the Board of Selectmen's office, you know, we'll, we'll keep looking into any other possibilities, but um, I don't know if it's appropriate and or too cumbersome, so I'll follow up through the chair with Mrs. Kropelka and as well as Attorney Heim if it's something that, if it is doable and not too exhaustive, if it's legal, um, when we do have to move 17 to Pierce School, I'm just wondering if we could have something there, if people, when they came to vote, if they wanted to indicate um, if Pierce was a better option for them than Stratton. Um, but but, but I, I, I haven't even looked into the legalities of that or anything, so um, I'll just follow up on that because where Stratton School is up higher on the hill, you know, down on Pierce School, you're pretty much staying on Summer Street in the flatland. Um, we, you know, we may find that may be a more viable option. So if I could, with the chairman, perhaps look into that and second Mr. Burns' motion. Okay. For the same thing. Okay. Uh, as I say, fortunately, we do have our excellent uh, fire chief with us, Robert Jefferson. Would you mind coming forward? And uh, we, uh, we, of course, uh, consult with Chief Jefferson about the use, as we would the superintendent, about the use of a school or whatever. Chief Jefferson. Good evening. Thank you. Um, you've all received my memo. I'll keep this as brief as possible, but based on all the factors that Mr. Leonard mentioned, a lot of those are in the memo that I gave you, and I'd like to cl clarify some of that uh, for the millions of people that Kevin says are watching out there so that we can get watch through. watch Kevin at home. <laughs> um, the Highland Station was re renovated, uh, when it was renovated in 2010, uh, was renovated as a public building but without public access. So it's a fire station, it was renovated for that purpose and it was never renovated for the purpose of the public ha having access to that whole building. Um, so in the memo I sent you, there's several things that I pointed out. And when we mentioned the handicapped accessibility in there, um, there's several things in the building that make it that it's not really um, handicapped friendly, let's put it that way. The front door is, a, is a ten, over a 10 foot um, size wooden door extremely heavy, extremely hard to open with no handicapped um, levers on it. As you move into a very small um, hallway that, that would get you to the apparatus floor that used to be the, the voting area, um, the doors open into the um, hallway, again, restricting handicaps because if someone in a, in a walker or a wheelchair would have a problem getting into that area. In the memo I mentioned a lot about um, the oil and the grease and the smells and so forth. Been on the department for 33 years, served at the Highland for about 15, I uh, was house captain up there for years and was up there during some of the voting back in the early 90s and uh, early 2000s. I'm not opposed to whether the Precinct 17 or 14 or someone votes there. What I'm trying to give you is my perspective that, that was there all day. That was there for the 10 hours or 14 hour shifts that people were voting. And all I heard was complaints from the workers, from the poll workers about the odor of diesel fumes, the odor of oil, the odor of um, gasoline. We used to scrub those buildings down with a very probably toxic detergent to clean those floors the day before the elections. The cement concrete floors absorb those materials and they don't go away. So what I experienced was constant complaints from the people that had to be there for the whole day. Um, it's a garage area that is heated to garage settings. It's heated to about 50 degrees. So when you put poll workers in there all day, we may be able to have two um, suspended space heaters on the apparatus floor. You'd have to run them full boot and hope that the doors were never opened to, to probably make it comfortable for the poll workers in there at this time, even with the new building. Um, we do not act deactivate the station. The station stays live. Uh, we want to keep our response in all areas of town the same as we did when we renovated the stations, we kept apparatus in each district. We would do the same thing on a voting day. 
That means the bells come in, the tones come in. Again, the workers would complain all day that that was disruptive to them. Um, so I'm looking at from what I saw as an experience in that building. The floors are all um, slightly edged towards trench drains throughout the whole apparatus floor. So it's not a smooth walking surface. Um, we mentioned about, he mentioned about keeping the, the apparatus warm. Well, I, my concern would be in a November election or a late March election, if we had to park that apparatus outside and it goes below freezing, those trucks are full of water. Um, I don't expect the water tank would freeze, but all the couplings and it could freeze and then we'd have a problem responding to a, to a situation. Um, sure, we were down at the town yard for a year. We had a garage down there we could use. We had a, a, a mobile home down there that we used. Um, when I was at the Highland Station, we functioned, we ran out of that station. Um, on a great day, yeah, you probably leave the, the overhead door open and people could walk in that way. Slightest bit of wind, the pole work is gonna have a problem. So logistically, it's not a good location. We lost over one third of the floor space that was there when we built the um, decon shower and the, and the gear lockers. That apparatus floor used to be you know, squared off similar to this room. Now you've lost over one third of the apparatus floor due to the fact of the, of the construction. So those are the reasons that I put in the memo why I don't think it's a good location for voting. Um, I, I understand the concern of the precinct voters, you know, to have that close location. Um, but the way the building's set up and the way we function, those apparatus are usually parked on the ramp or out front, a little more difficult for them to get in. Parking is a little bit of an issue. Um, and again, to clarify, when that building was rebuilt and we went through all the historical stuff, we went through all the ADA, that building was built as a public building but not for public access. And that's why when we did headquarters just recently, we made that a completely handicapped accessible building with an elevator and with all with everything that, that makes it so it is completely handicapped accessible. So, so having said all that, I don't want to belag beleaguer this anymore, but if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Any questions? Good. Okay. Thank you, Thanks. Chief. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak on this matter? Okay, on the motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Mahan, recommending uh, no action on the resolution. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. So uh, next is our final votes and comments on 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Uh, what this is, is just as we've done tonight where we had warrant hearings on three different articles, we've already conducted warrant hearings on those article numbers I just mentioned. And, tonight, and so from there, our uh, town council takes and writes up the decision, uh, and so that's what we're voting on here. Anybody have any comments on any individual article? Mr. Kiro. Mr. Kiro, I'm gonna request that we, we table the final vote on uh, Article 24, the bylaw amendment on camping on public property until our next um, meeting. Um, yep. this, as sometimes happens when we have the very first round of hearings, uh, the comments came in from some of our boards and commissions, I think, uh, late to the uh, to the hearing, and uh, I think it might be prudent if we could just keep at least a public comment period open for just a little bit longer before we actually act on the, the final. I, I've been contacted by a few people this weekend, and I think that the manager has uh, as well. And my understanding, I don't want to put you on the spot, Mr. Manager, my understanding is that there there is some outreach um, happening with some of your uh, department heads as well with, with some of the, the folks who have raised some legitimate questions, I think, around the uh, what's been brought yeah. forward. May I, Mr. Chairman? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Kuro. So, uh, just as you've said, uh, after express, uh, excuse me, concerns being expressed by members of the Human Rights Commission and other folks in town, uh, what we want to work to do before the board's next meeting on March 21st is ha have um, <coughs> a more uh, in-depth internal working session between members of the Police Department, Health and Human Services, myself and Town Council, provide more background information to the Human Rights Commission for consideration, have uh, a representative of that group that I just mentioned attend the Human Rights, Commission's me uh, Human Rights Commission's meeting on March 16th, have a discussion in regards to the issue there, and then come back before this board and really roll all of that out to the board before a final vote is taken. Okay. So is there a second to the motion by uh, Mr. Kiro to table Article 24? Second. Second. Further discussion? Just um, the caveat that the clock is ticking. Um, I know that the town manager will work with Mrs. Kropelka in terms of 
making sure we get everything ready so it can go out to print and everything in time. So um, whatever what you're going to do, move this as expeditiously as possible. But between you and the selectman's office and the chairman, determine what that drop dead deadline is in terms of a date and make sure we meet that. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll be back at the next meeting. All right, all those in favor of tabling, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody else on any of the other articles? Mr. Dunn. Um, I, so on Article 19, 19 yep. I had, my, I, I, we're testing my memory, and I will all experience the group test. Uh, I had proposed that the selectmen retain approval of the executive director. Mm -hmm. However, the um, other members of the board wished to agree to the request to take the Board of Selectmen out of that approval process. And I feel like I conceded, and did, and, but the, I don't think the language reflects that. So I think the language reflects what I proposed, but isn't what the Board voted. <laughs> so I think under D, right, oh, D. Yeah. the intent is where it says shall obtain the approval of the Board of Selectmen. I think you guys didn't want that. I'm not remembering it either way, honestly. I did. I don't remember. I think you I would. Not, you weren't. I don't think. Or was this is the one. This might be the meeting right here, Diane. Th that's what I was wondering because I saw some five O's. So I'm like, was I here for this? Uh, no, I wasn't. So that's why I'm not. Because I would have, if I, I was the here, five O's. I would have um, yeah, expressed that, that before yeah. we continue to abdicate abdicate our um, selectman responsibilities. Um, I don't know if I can speak on this in a meeting I wasn't at. I'm j just saying that's why I don't remember it because I would, uh, that's true, I would um, actually try to uh, gain a third vote to keep it under what it says in D. I bet your memory is better than ours. <laughs> fewer of these than you do. Um, I do remember your motion, and I think you did, in fact, concede, and I think the vote went along with that concession. Um, there was also the discussion of keeping it under the town manager in that state. Yep. That's, that, that, that's what I remember. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what right. you remember as well? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mr. Tapley. Yeah, wh what I had offered for the board's consideration during that discussion was that keeping it the way it's worded here would make it, I believe, the lone employed position appointed by the town manager subject to the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. And that was what persuaded me. Not, not that it's wrong or right, but that it would be a unique in that structure. Hmm. Well, I guess to do it procedurally correctly, which I wouldn't do, I'm, I'm happy with D the way it is, so okay. I don't want to make any changes to it. So, but we have to also change the five O's to four O's as well in the votes. Well, I've got Mr. Chairman, well, no, the, the vote comes tonight. Right. So no, but it's got, reflected. Well, I understand. It says it, I, I understand it, but um, so where you are here tonight, mm -hmm. when we take the vote, that's what's reflected, correct, mm -hmm. uh, Town Council? I think. I think it, yes. Basically, if if you move favorable action, um, typically I record the vote when you make the favorable action motion. Right. Uh, but it's not usually because of an absence. It's usually because there's other there's some disagreement or whatever that it's not a 5-0 vote. So. I think if you want to vote now to have a unanimous vote or a 4-1 vote, you could do that. Okay. So why does it say 5-0? I'm just saying in the future, I could it say 4-0? Yeah. Oh, you I, I wasn't here, Mr. Chairman. I, I must That's have right. just, you know, missed That's that. Right. Sorry. That was right. You, right. And Marlinga didn't show up. That's right. <laughs> you didn't know that. No. Okay. Yeah. Did you I, want to? I got a little lost. Are you voting on There's no the wrong yet. language? Or okay. We don't have a motion yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So... Uh, Ms. Mahan wants to keep this, but I believe the rest of us yeah, I agreed do not with the town it. manager that it's too unique a situation for the board of selectmen to have a say. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Is that worded correctly? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I want to be clear. I'm really not advocating one way or the other, just stating that it would create that unique situation. Mr. Dunn. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to bite my tongue for now. Well, now's a good time, though, if you want to unbite it. Uh, I move that we modify this uh, uh, proposed language to strike the words, I should have worked with the town manager, oops, sorry. Thank you. Uh, to strike the words, uh, so under D, executive director, before appointing an executive director, the town manager shall consider the recommendation of the commission. So that means remove uh, the words, obtain the approval of the board of selectmen and 
Second. And so just to, to read it in whole in my, propose, in my motion under D. Executive Director, before appointing an Executive Director, the Town Manager shall consider the recommendation of the Commission. The Executive Director shall be an employee of the Town and report to the Town Manager. The prospective Executive Director shall have the demonstrated experience in human and civil rights as well as proven ability to work cooperatively in a diverse community. Okay, Mr. Kerr, do you want to say anything no. on this? Okay, give you one last shot, Mr. Mahoney. No, nothing. I'm all set. But you're not happy. I'm always happy. <laughs> you okay. pick your battles. You pick your choose. Anything juice. else? Anybody else wishing to speak on this? Sorry, I just, this wasn't my, um, this wasn't my article, and I don't know all the details, so I don't want to say yes to something. Um, I believe that the original was that, um, to change the wording, that we could have one at if one is deemed necessary, right? So this wording means right. it's possible to be in accordance with the bylaw, even right. if we don't have one, correct? There may be an executive okay. director okay. if determined necessary by the commission. Okay. Provided this vote goes the way I think it is, we'll be back where we were two weeks ago, which is your, the commission's proposals were accepted with the exception of um, them still reporting to the town manager. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Byrne, I, right? No. Or Mr. Dan. Dunn, sorry, Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? I was an aye. You, oh, you were an aye? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just gave it an co old you. college try, or old okay. high school no, try. No, 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 loving you, loving you. <laughs> you you've been asking for more people to talk. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Any other article anybody wants to drive us crazy on? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, may, may I have a, brief, a brief comment when those selectmen are done? Yeah. On these articles? Yes. Or, okay. I think we're about to vote them. Do you want to speak before then or after? Yes, please. I, I want to note just one that we're not voting on Article 21. Um, it's not included in your recommendations. That was the article with respect to uh, changing the membership of the uh, Cultural Commission. I just needed some additional time to consult with the Cultural Commission on exactly how it was supposed to what the end product should should look like. The other ones were relatively obvious, although I guess not entirely obvious to me uh, from a review of the uh, tape. Um, the second thing is I wanted to make an important uh, a note uh, to correct the record on a matter with respect to um, articles um, 26 and 27, There's sort of a discussion on that point. There was a, a point that I think is important for me to correct the record on. As I've notified the selectmen, there was some colloquy between a proponent of those articles and Mr. Dunn about uh, a public records issue, uh, namely whether Mr. Dunn had disclosed all of the emails that were uh, responsive to a request by that proponent. Uh, Mr. Dunn had, in fact, disclosed all those emails um, in bunches to my office, and it was in uh, oversight by my office that all those emails didn't get to Mr. Loretti. So I apologize both to Mr. Loretti and to Mr. Dunn for that uh, sort of mutual misapprehension where Mr. Dunn was quite accurately confident that he had disclosed all of his emails and Mr. Reddy was confident that he hadn't received them. So I apologize for the consternation that uh, may have resulted therefrom. Okay. Thank you. So, an article, please God, I get this right, 18, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Now I have a motion for approval of those articles. Wait. I think you do. What about 20, Kevin? Yeah. 20. Oh, we just changed that one. Sorry. Okay, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Dear Lord, help him the second time. On the list. <laughs> 18, 20, right? 18, 19, 19, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 25. I, everything but 24. Everything but just 24. Hit me with this. Will you see? <laughs> Wait, yeah. You didn't let go. Okay, everything but the. No. <laughs> Everything but 24. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, I suppose. Mr. Greeley, Forgive I know it's after the vote, but I just wanted to comment that I thought that the selectmen's comments on 26 and 27 were really good at capturing mm -hmm. what it was that we were after, and I really appreciated that. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mr. All right. Uh, correspondence received. Move receipt. Second. Move receipt. Is there a second? Um, As predicted, Mr. Yeah, but, um, I'm glad that we went through the process. Yeah. <laughs> you. you just keep chipping. Someday New business. Might... Marie. No, I'll see. I'll see tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. 
just make sure you I'm just sleeping here tonight, right, so you know. Sure I'm not going to bother going home. Okay. Right. Mr. Heim, new business? The jury administrator of the Federal District Court appreciates your patience today, and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a few brief pieces of new business. So uh, at the last board meeting, I mentioned that uh, upcoming was the Arlington Police Department's annual awards ceremony. Uh, so that was uh, several weeks ago on Thursday evening, and it really was uh, an exceptional ceremony. The chief and his leadership team and all of the officers that were uh, given awards were, it was really a great night um, put together very well and you know very happy to be there. And I think the, it just really showed a great team and camaraderie down at the Arlington Police Department. So I was, I was really pleased with that. Uh, also wanted to announce that kicking off on April 1st will be the construction for what's called the Arlington Center Safe Travel Project or the Bikeway Connection Project, uh, also called the CLAMP Project. There's been a lot of different acronyms or names associated with this. In preparation for that, we're going to be having a public information session on March 23rd at 7 p.m. in Town Hall. Uh, we're going to model it after what we did for the East Arlington rebuild in terms of providing uh, upfront project narrative, a little bit of detail about the schedule and what's going to be happening, and then provide a chance for people from the public to ask any questions and get questions answered. So I'll be providing materials to the board, but you'll be hearing announcements about that meeting uh, coming up soon. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the School Enrollment Task Force has been meeting and will be meeting again tomorrow evening. Uh, so myself, along with uh, Ms. Mahan and Mr. Kuro, uh, will be in attendance. Where we are heading there is uh, sort of really honing in on what to do about the middle school crowding option, and we're going to be further studying either an expansion at the Audison or renovating the Gibbs School, and we're also continuing to talk about an expansion at the Thompson Elementary School. Uh, the reason I wanna, wanted to bring this up tonight is where some of this dis discussion is going is now leading towards talking about potential debt exclusions to pay for these renovations slash expansions. So, as the board knows, this is the only body in town that can authorize a debt exclusion being put on the ballot. <coughs> so they, there will be much further discussion and much more detail forthcoming, but I wanted to officially be on the board's radar um, to be prepared for those discussions. Uh, and that's all I have. So tell me again what you said. The, the middle school, the options were, I, I know not decided, but uh, perhaps renovate the Gibbs. What, what was the other? Uh, the other would be to Temporary. put an addition on the Audison. Oh, add an a permanent A permanent addition to the Audison. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. New business, Mr. Byrne. Um, not really. I do. Uh, I just think we have to thank the selectman's office as well as everyone else involved in uh, making sure our elections go so smoothly. I know uh, it was a great turnout, and um, our office works incredibly hard to make sure that goes well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marie. New business, Ms. Mahan. I have an abbreviated new business because I had it. A note to myself on my Facebook page that I can't connect to the server. So, um, I, first, I want to congratulate the members of the Arlington Fire Department who participated in. Um, it was they walked up 61 flights of stairs um, at the Prudential Center. 200 Clarendon, right? Exactly. Oh, that's the new name. Um, and um, in I think 30 or 50, whatever full gear, um, and I believe they came in second. I had all the names of the. Um, teams that, uh, team from Arlington that participated, but I ca can only think of three or four of them. I don't know if Chief Jefferson, I don't I mean to, I was on the team first, I know that, but, uh, Oh, we came in. <laughs> yeah, So I, I can think of half the team, and, but I didn't want to name and, and miss out on that. But I really do want to congratulate them on that. I know on their uh, website page um, they have, had a goal. Um, I did the 61 because for 61 stairs, I think they're about $200 shy uh, of their goal. So if anyone wants to um, go to, and I apologize that I'm not going to be able to give the website, um, I know if, if you Google Arlington Fire Department, uh, Cindy Gallagher was here. You know what? I'll make sure, that Mr. Chapelain. Well, the fire department's now on Twitter, so if you're on Twitter, you can probably find it via the Arlington Fire Department's Twitter feed. Okay. If any, and I know that the Arlington Advocate and um, I believe your Arlington.com also did stories on this and provided the appropriate link. And I apologize. I, I had it all, and I'm just technology, technologically deprived using the town manager's template. 
which she was kind enough to give to me. And then also, I just want to say congratulations to the Arlington High girls and boys varsity basketball team um, uh, for beginning tournament play. And um, unfortunately, Arlington, we got a little bit on the boys varsity team into the tournament seating playing, but um, we're successful the first tournament and the second tournament. Malden Catholic came out and um, they definitely, you know, were down there on the floor and did an excellent job, and I want to congratulate them and the Malden Catholic players and fans um, who were um, very responsible and respectful. But I do want to congratulate both coaches, and especially Coach Bowler, for an outstanding season. It's so nice to see the stands down there packed. Um, and for me, it's when I can push everything to the back of my brain and just focus on some good, wholesome fun. Except for the more tournament games, the more you get squished into your neighbor. And also congratulations to the um, boys and girls varsity hockey team. I know the, the girls hockey team, I think they made it to the third seed of the tournament um, and on Sunday. Um, Hingham was just a little bit better. And the boys varsity Arlington High hockey team, I believe is playing tomorrow night in Bill Ricca. Um, I think they bested Wilmington 5-0. to oh. And Wilmington's a great team, so. Those of us who aren't going to the school enrollment task force, I mean, if you want to get up to the Borica rink and, and cheer on um, the boys varsity hockey team, um, you're more than welcome to. It's worth the price of admission. And then, I can't remember. I'll pass on that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you. Just one thing, I'm happy to report that the board does now have a team for the uh, Arlington Education Foundation's uh, Trivia B. Mr. Greeley and myself and Mr. Chaplain has, a, has agreed to be our ringer. Look how happy he is. He gets so competitive. I didn't know if I this. made the team. He made the team. <laughs> He's our ringer. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to represent you well. That's on March 20th, Sunday, March 20th, from 3 to 5 at Town Hall. And there are usually, I don't know, 20 to 30 community organizations uh, com, com, compete there. It's always a good time. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. You two had better give all the answers. That's all that I can say. Mr. Dunn, give Mr. Greeley the answer so he would say. We'll let you build the structures out of toothpicks and straws. Uh, just a note that uh, town election season is now in full swing, and we are less than a month from local election day. And so you should keep track of um, your debates and your positions and uh, candidates' nights and coffees and kickoff meetings and make your decisions about who to vote for in the upcoming April election. I will note that I'm on the ballot in Precinct 21, but uh, not in a townwide race. And at risk of entering some non-Arlington content, um, my brother placed 21st in the race up, the, build, up the, the building in his gear. He was third in his age group, setting a personal best, but he was seven seconds behind the leader. Sweet. <laughs> Congrats he to your may, bro. He may be in better shape than me, you know. As well as <laughs> That's, <out>. it. <laughs> okay. That's it. That's it. Um, and I'm sorry to end on a somber note. I should have opened with this, but we did lose quite an Arlingtonian uh, this week. Dr. Marilyn Flaherty passed away. She was a, a principal, Dr. Marilyn Flaherty, she was a principal at the Paris School for, um, I don't remember, a lot of years. And um, she was, of course, a member of my um, darling Select Tones as well for a number of years, but uh, uh, made great, great contributions to this community. A moment of silence, please, for Dr. Marilyn Flaherty. Thank you, may God have mercy on her soul. Uh, and next meeting of the Board of Selectmen is on the 22nd, 22nd. March 22nd. Motion to Move adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those in favor.